Okay, I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about a specific type of uh, membrane protein called an ion channel. Now, an ion channel is a uh, protein that is um, a transmembrane protein within the phospholipid membrane. So it sits within the phospholipid membrane and it has a tubular structure, um, sort of like that. So it's all connected together, but in like a sort of a straw-like uh, channel structure. And sort of in the middle of the channel is a special little feature called the selectivity, fee um, selectivity filter. Now, this selectivity filter allows, is um, selective for very specific ions. And the selectivity may be based on charge, or size, or something else. So for instance, um, there is a ion channel that is specific for potassium, and it allows potassium to slowly leak out of the cell from the intracellular space to the extracellular space. But it doesn't let a lot of other, it doesn't let any other ions pass through. So this is a um, ion channel that is specific for potassium. So by the nature of the selectivity filter, by size and charge and, and other factors, it only lets potassium leak through. Okay, so that is a um, specific ion channel. Now there's another type of ion channel that I wanted to talk about that's called a gated ion channel. So again, we will um, draw you a little so that you know we are still in the phospholipid membrane. Now a gated ion channel is interesting because the selectivity filter uh, can be opened or closed. So if you imagine a little gate with a hinge here, so it's a little door that can either open or close. And that door opens and closes based on, um, based on something that happens on the surface of the cell. So there's two types of um, gated ion channels. Um, the first type is voltage gated. Okay, so how the voltage gated channel works is if there is a change in the membrane potential from positive, where it's usually positive, now all of a sudden it's negative, and there is a receptor here where det um, something detects, the, the protein detects the change in charge on the outside surface of the cell, and this change in charge from positive to negative changes the shape of the protein. So, um, just by the nature of the charge, it kind of rearranges the amino acids and that a chain reaction causes this gate to swing open. All right, now, so there is an example of a sodium gated ion channel. So when the, uh, when the change in charge on the surface of the cell occurs, it allows the sodium to pass through. When Previously, with the gate closed, the sodium was not able to pass through. Okay, so that is a sodium gated, um, a sodium gated voltage ion channel. Okay, now another type of ion channel is called a ligand gated channel. And what happens with the ligand gated channel is instead of um, a change in voltage causing the, um, the selectivity filter to change, um, some kind of chemical causes the voltage to change. So say there's a little protein that's floating out here, and that protein moves along and binds to a, um, an amino acid on the uh, surface of the cell, on the surface of that ion channel, 
and again that chain causes a chain reaction and causes the the entire uh, protein to shift around and the end result is it causes the ligand gate to open and this um, allows a chemical to pass uh, ion to pass through so an example of this um, is a a um, ligand gated sodium channel um, that we have in our uh, nervous system uh, in the synapses of nerves okay so this is a ligand gated sodium channel okay now both of the gated sodium channels whether they're ligand gated or voltage gated um, it all occurs because of amino acids on the very surface of the protein um, are react to the changes at the surface of the cell whether it, it is binding of the ligand or whether it is a change in charge from positive to negative that causes these amino acids to shift and it causes a chain reaction that changes the shape of the entire protein and that change in shape opens up the selectivity filter allowing the ion to flow through.